So we're midway through the transfer window and that one position Borough still need to fill, in my opinion, is still empty. And there's no links to suggest that Borough are even looking to sign a new striker in this window. But maybe that's because we've had one here all along. He's in. And he's snuck it across to Hayden Hutney! What is up guys, Matthew here, welcome back to the channel and, well, today I want to discuss a certain Finnish footballer with you guys, a footballer who has been injured since mid-October and recently come back at the Den this weekend and drilled home Borough's third goal to make everyone stop and think that maybe, just maybe, our answer to a number nine and a striker up top to help Latte laugh and Josh Coburn carry the load and convert these unbelievable number of chances that we create on a weekly basis. Maybe that striker is here already. And his name is Marcus Force. Now, it's quite incredible that Marcus Force hasn't been in this discussion before. But I think fans have always kind of wanted or knew that Marcus Force could play up front. In fact, he naturally is a centre-forward. And when I was on the Borough Breakdown podcast last weekend, we discussed Marcus Force, and, and Dana made a good point. When the podcast guys spoke to one of the Brentford podcasts, Besotted, back when we signed Marcus Force, they actually said that Marcus Force was the best finisher at Brentford. And this was at a time where Ben Rama, Mbwemo, Ollie Watkins all played for Brentford, yet Marcus Force, who was more of an impact player off the bench, was actually the best finisher of them all. So, you'd think, as long as this guy's given chances, he would, and he should, put them away. Maybe he's not the best presser, maybe he's not the best in the air, winning aerial duels, maybe he's not the quickest who could run in behind, he might not offer the, the speed of Lati Lath, he might not offer the physicality of Josh Coburn, but what he gives us is a player who, when given a chance inside the box, or in and around the box, more often than not, it's on target. And more often that it's on target, it finds the back of the net. And the problem with those, I guess, so far is that he's played on the right so much for Michael Carrick in his time as Borough manager. We've just sort of assumed that, well, Carrick doesn't want to play him centre forward. He won't play there. It's just not in Carrick's style of football for him to do so. And we've just brushed it off. It's not going to happen. He's, he's a right winger. And we had a very similar thing with Christian Stuani back when we got promoted in 2015-16. He was a striker who we signed from Spain who played on the right wing in Karanka's Borough side, and that again was a more goal-scoring right winger, who again, he did great for us, but I think, especially when we were in the Premier League, Stuani, if played up front, could have gotten us a lot more goals, and maybe helped us stay up, or at least make a fist of it. And we could be in a similar territory here with Marcus Force, because despite him playing on the right-hand side predominantly, he still scored quite a decent number of goals for the club last season, he made 38 championship appearances and he scored 10 goals. He got 5 assists that season, so that's a goal every 3 games. And if you look at the positions he played in, he played 16 of them games and scored 6 of them goals from the right-hand side. 3 of them came when he played through the middle as a centre-forward in 11 appearances. And... At the weekend, seeing him come on against Millwall and seeing him get put through up top and him finishing the way he did, it feels like a no-brainer for Michael Carrick to take a closer look at this possibility. And he was actually asked post-match if he would look to put Marcus Force up front a bit more because it's not just the fact that Force has come back from injury, it's the fact that this is also aligned with Latte Laugh picking up what seems to be a minor to serious injury to his hamstring in the Chelsea game, meaning he's going to be out for long enough. And Josh Coburn, the only other striker, is carrying a number of knocks right now. And let's be fair, he's a young lad. He should have been out on loan this season. We should not expect to pile 
the pressure of leading the line at Borough in a playoff campaign, hopefully, on a kid as young as Josh Coburn, who has done fantastic, by the way. We need someone up top who's a bit more experienced, a bit more clinical, and I think just a bit more prolific. And out of the three of them, there is no doubt Marcus Force is the most prolific. He is the most natural finisher of the lot. And if you put all three of them in the penalty box, provided them with a chance, Marcus Force would be the one I'd feel more confident of putting that chance away. And sometimes when you have an injury crisis, you stumble upon certain things. You stumble upon a formula you may have not tried before that works a treat. And I feel like this could be it. Keep him in the middle. Keep playing in there, see how he goes. If he plays well there, starts scoring us the goals. I mean, we create so many chances with a, I think with a, with a side in the, in the league who've, who've missed the most big chances in the championship. I think if you stick Marcus Force on the end of them, and he'd have been there on the end of them for most of the season when he was injured, I think Borough pick up 10 more goals, at least 10 more goals than what, we'd have picked up so far, or what we have done so far. So I think it's definitely worth a go, and then I think I would be happy enough, because we've not been linked with any strikers in January. We, we linked with Brandon Vasquez early on in the window, and he went and signed for somebody else, and since then there's been absolutely no one linked. And January's a tough window for strikers. We saw last, last January, you tend to go for loan signings in this window especially when you want really really good quality at the top of the pitch and you, you, there aren't harder players to find and more expensive players to sign than prolific centre forwards and off the top of my head I honestly can't think of a Premier League youngster who's not getting game time who would be loaned out to Borough at the moment and would make a difference like Cameron Archer last season was someone who was perfect. He'd already had experience with Preston in the Championship, proven he could score goals at that level. He just needed to move up a next step to a playoff chasing, automatic chasing Championship team. It was a perfect marriage between Borough and Cameron Archer at that time. The timing has to be right for the player, the club who are loaning him out, and the club who are loaning him in. And I can't see anybody who we could loan from the Premier League, a young striker who I think has got championship experience, who we could hang our hat on, who has also scored goals in the league before. The only one was Tom Cannon, who of course we went in for in the summer and has since signed permanently for Leicester. As well as that, if you want to buy a striker who's going to guarantee you 10, 15, 20 goals in the championship, you're probably nowadays going to be spending upwards of around £10 million, if not more, and Borough simply do not have the money to do that. It's not within our model to do that. We want to sign permanents, but we want to sign young players who can grow into being bigger players with sell-on value. So if we were to sign a striker who we could afford, I think we'd take a punt on someone from maybe League One, the top end of League One, someone who's proven they can do it in the level below, who can step up. But even then, is that still enough to get you in the playoffs? I'm still not sure it is. So Borough are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. They either find a cheap, unbelievable bargain of a player who's proven in this division who they can afford, or they pull a loan out of somewhere. And I can't see where any of them options come from. So why not use an option who's already here in Marcus Force and use our money to put it elsewhere, which is something I think we're actually doing with a certain winger who apparently we might be bringing in from Man United. And I'll be discussing that in my next video. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. I'll leave that carrot hanging right there. And we'll discuss that in the next video, if you know who I mean. So, looking at the, the squad then and the pre-squad graphic. This is where we're at and we've updated this as the transfer window has gone on. Now, of course, after the signing of Azaz, after the signing of Luke Ayling, this is where we were left. And, of course, we were green absolutely everywhere apart from up front. And what it does is it does this. So you put Marcus Force up front and he was already in the list of strikers, but he was sort of, yeah, he can play there, but I never thought Carrick would play him there, but he since confirmed he would. And I think the timing and the proof and all the numbers are there to suggest that he should definitely get a run up front in this team. So if you put Marcus Force as the number one striker at the minute, I'd say I'm happy. The greedy part of me 
would still want us to go out and sign another striker. But I just don't see who the best realistic options are right now. But if links start emerging in the coming days and a striker makes sense, I'm all for it. But as it stands, would I be happy with Marcus Force up front? I would. I would be happy just because I can't see what options come from elsewhere. What that does do though, moving him into that central striking position, it then makes the right winging position yellow for me. It now could improve because if Force is going to be played up front, you take him out the right wing, you've got Silvera who I still think is finding his feet and is probably better off the left. Rogers, he's better off the left. Greenwood definitely is better off the left. So for me, this then opens the door for Isaiah Jones to need some competition. And as I say, as I teased, it looks like we might be putting our focus into getting Isaiah Jones some competition. Hinting to me, we are going to move force from that position into a central striking position as a number nine. So... Yeah, it's very intriguing to see how Borough are moulding their squad, how they're shifting players around. It's really good to see we've got a squad that's so adaptable with players who can move from here to there. But yeah, if Marcus Force is the option going forward for the rest of the season, I'm more than happy to see how that goes because it's his natural position and he's the best finisher at the club. We then just have to hope and pray that we get someone in to help Isaiah Jones and if it's the player we think we might be getting, oh my word. This team is going to be ridiculous. But more on that in the next video. And if you want to see that, then do hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, do give this video a like. And as I say, do leave me a comment in the section below. If you're a Borough fan and who you think should be our centre forward, would you be happy with Marcus Force being put through the middle? Would you be comfortable that he could get us the goals we need? Or would you still want us to sign that one extra centre forward just to be sure? Let me know in the comment section below. But until next time, guys, I'll be back very, very soon for another video on a player who we are being linked with, which is very, very exciting. But until then, I'll see you all in the next one.